crown ethers. Recall that we use ethers as the solvent in the Grignard reaction. The reason for this is the ion-dipole interaction between the magnesium ion and the oxygens on the ether stabilizes that magnesium. And then, since Grignard contains a nucleophilic attack, having a polar aprotic solvent is good for business. Crown ethers are cyclic ethers, and they form very strong attractions to metal atoms, or metal ions. Notice the names of the crown ethers. There are two numbers sandwiching the word crown in between. And the first number is three times the second number. The second number is the number of oxygens. And then the first number is the total number of atoms in the ring. So 12 crown 4 is a small crown ether. If you go to 5 oxygens, you now have added 1 oxygen and 1 ethyl group. So it's 15 crown 5. 6 oxygens is 18 crown 6. If you were to name dioxane as a crown ether, there are one, two, three, four, five, six atoms, so it would be six crown two. You could also have nine crown three. Eighteen crown six is ideal for solvating potassium ions in nonpolar solvents. So say you wanted to dissolve potassium fluoride in benzene, you would add some eighteen crown six. This would solubilize the potassium fluoride because it creates an ideal binding pocket for the metal ion. K plus goes right in there. This binding pocket has a hydrophobic portion of the ether. The C's and H's pointing to the outside, and the inside, you've got the oxygens with their negative charge. So it's ideally suited for solvating a cation. And here's a space filling model of that interaction. Now, 18 crown 6 is perfect for potassium. 15 crown 5 would be better for a smaller metal, like sodium. And 12 crown 4 is perfect for lithium. So you wouldn't really use 9 crown 3, because there's no metal ion smaller than lithium. 